My name is Jonathan Bailey. I'm Director of Conservation Programs at the Zoological Society of London. And in this video, we'll be talking about what we focus on when we want to conserve species. Now, imagine you're a medical doctor. You walked into the forest and you found 10 people that were injured. Some of them were so injured, there's almost nothing you could do about it. Some of them were well enough that they could sit there for a while and others were at high risk. Which ones would you focus on? So we'd probably focus on those that were at high risk and then you would work back. That's called triage. And it's exactly what we do in the conservation world. We have some species and ecosystems that are highly threatened, some species and ecosystems that are not that threatened. And we have to figure out where we focus our attention. So in previous lessons, we've seen how threatened the world's species and ecosystems are. We've seen how urgent the response is. And we know that there are limited resources. So we have to think about how we use these limited resources to most effectively conserve the species and ecosystems we have. What we decide to conserve really depends on what we value. And what we value actually changes through time. Now, when I started in conservation, we tended to focus on charismatic species, our flagship species. Those are species that you're really familiar with, like rhinos, elephants, and tigers. So what makes a charismatic species? Well, perhaps it's things that look a bit like us, like primates. Or perhaps it's things that might have eaten our ancestors in the past and we we're quite scared of them, like big cats. Or perhaps it was things our ancestors actually ate in the past, like big ungulates. Or things that looked like a baby with a big head and big eyes. And the final thing that tends to make things a bit charismatic is things that are colorful. Uh, the conservation movement wasn't just focusing on charismatic species. It tended to be charismatic species and threatened species. But then we started to think more about how we set priorities on a spatial scale. So where in the world do we set as a priority? And there, there were three elements that people tended to focus on. One was species richness, so the broad range of species. So more species, the better, basically. The other was endemism. Endemism means that you're restricted to a specific location, a specific area. And the third is threat. So if you're threatened, you have a high probability of extinction. So those three variables in different ways tended to be brought together to set spatial priorities. So there are values associated with any priority setting mechanism we use. So if we value threatened species, we would focus more on threatened species. If we value endemic species, then we would focus more on them. And if we value species richness, then we might just focus on the parts of the world that just have the most diverse group of species. But there's now a new way of looking at what we might conserve. And this is really starting to dominate many of the agendas of the global conservation organizations. And it's called ecosystem services. And essentially, it's focusing on the components of biodiversity that people need. It doesn't look at biodiversity as intrinsically valuable and something that we should just conserve in its own right. It focuses on what we need for our own livelihoods or for our own security. So if we focus on that set of values, then the components of biodiversity that we save is very different. So essentially, there have evolved two key ways of looking at the natural world. One is conserving biodiversity in its own right because it has an intrinsic value. And the other is looking at biodiversity in terms of what it does for us and humanity. And this is really a choice we have to make as a society. Will we focus just on the parts that benefit us? Or will we focus on some of the things that have no value and can't pay their way? Now, this is very important to focus on what we need. But this changes our values. If we focus just on those components of biodiversity, then essentially we may lose a broad range of species that aren't necessarily needed by humanity. Once we understand the component of biodiversity that we're going to focus on, we have to think about how we are going to measure it and understand how it's changing through time to see if we're being effective or not. And we'll learn about this more in future lessons. So ideally, we wouldn't have to do triage. Ideally, we could raise enough funds to focus on all species and all ecosystems. But in reality, we're going to have a set amount of resources, and we're going to have to make tough decisions. We're going to have to think about which species and which ecosystems we start on first. Now join us on the forum to tell us which species and habitats you think are the most important to save.
And in the next video, we'll learn about the main ways that conservationists make these decisions.